Welcome. This video is going to show us how to create histograms, stem plots, and a few basic summary statistics in Jump. The example will be based on the example we covered in our lecture four notes, uh, in which a pediatrician tested the cholesterol levels of some of the pediatrician's young patients. All right, so the first thing we have to do, obviously, is get the data into Jump. We could enter it manually. I have it saved as a file, so to open the file, you would go to File, Open. And my computer is going slow here for some reason. Uh, the example was in our lecture four notes, so I have it saved as L4 for lecture four histogram example. When I open that, it'll open my data set in which I'd enter that data, the variable titled cholesterol uh, of the 20 patients as you see here. Now, in order to summarize this information graphically, we're going to create a histogram. We could use the graph graph builder option as we did in the previous lecture or in the previous video, but we're going to go a little bit differently uh, in a way that will give us a little bit more flexibility using analyze and distribution. So if you select analyze and distribution, you will notice that where it says Y columns, it's the only thing that says required. That's the variable that we want to analyze. So that happens to be cholesterol. I'm going to go ahead and drag that over there to where it says Y columns. Um, if I wanted just the histogram, I could check this box. However, since I want summary statistics and some other things, we're going to leave that unchecked for the time being and select OK. Upon doing so, we'll get our histogram, we get a box plot, we get the quantile or quartiles, excuse me, and some summary statistics as well. So we're going to start our focus here with the histogram. Uh, first off, histograms are rarely displayed vertically as you see here. So let's change that. In order to do that, remember, in Jump, the, the options are often hidden under these little red triangles that you see. What we're going to do is select the one next to the variable, the variable again being cholesterol. So if we select this drop-down menu, um, we're going to mainly play around here under histogram options. Under histogram options, if you point at that, it brings up another window. And one of the options that is there is it says vertical, which is checked. To, to get rid of the vertical layout, go ahead and select that again, and now we have the horizontal layout that's a little bit more comfortable. Another thing that we want to do here, above here is a box plot. Generally, we don't want to layer them. If we wanted to create a box plot, we would do it as a separate graph. So to get rid of this box plot up here, again, playing under the options, we would go to cholesterol, choose the options menu, and you will notice that it says outlier box plot, and that is checked. To get rid of that, go ahead and select that, and now that box plot that was across the top is missing. All right, now, a couple of problems I have with this graph. Jump, jump will pre-select the bin width for you, how wide those things are, and there, there's really nothing wrong with their, cho their choices. However, neither of the axes are labeled. We have no idea what these numbers mean. So we need to go ahead and play around with this a little bit. Um, in order to label the x-axis, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my mouse just below the x-axis so that the little hand, the grabber, pops up, if you will. If you right-click, there will be an option for Add Axis Label. And you can call it whatever you like. I'm going to call it cholesterol. And now that, op, that, that axis, at least we know what the 200 number means. It's a cholesterol level. Now, the bigger problem with this graph is we have no idea what the height of these bars represent. So we want, generally with a histogram, you want the counts or the frequencies to be on this y-axis. So in order to do this, again, if you select your red arrow where the options are, there will be an option. Uh, we will go to histogram options. And what we can do is put a count axis on there. Unfortunately, jump puts it on the right side. And there's really nothing wrong with having it on the right side. However. Um, I think most people are accustomed to seeing the axis labeled on the left-hand side. So we can move this, and the way that you would do this, again, if you go to cholesterol, go to, excuse me, display options this time, a little bit different, there will be an option for axes on left, the bottom one, and when we do that, it'll move the count from the, the right side of our graph to the left side, and now at least it looks more familiar. Now. Understand that jump pre-selected these bin widths, and it looks like the bin widths are 2.5. In the example that we did in class, we were instructed to use a bin width of 5. So in order to customize this and make the graph look more like we want it to, and this is something you do when you, when you create histograms, is you play with the bin width, uh, we can again go to our option menu. Under histogram options, one of the options here says set bin width. So if we select that, you can enter any number you'd like. Um, I'm going to make it a 5. And now the histogram is beginning to look a lot like we saw 
in our class notes. Okay, so in order to get this into Microsoft Word or whatever your Word processing program is, again, I'm going to right click in the background of the graph. It'll bring up a list of options. At the very bottom, we want Edit. When we pick Edit, it brings up more options. We're going to choose Copy Graph. And then in Word, I can go ahead and paste that graph right into Word. And if you wanted to rescale it, uh, resize it, you obviously can do that very easily. Going back to Jump Then, uh, a few of the other features of this output that we want to look at is it does give you some summary statistics. So for instance, down here you're told that the mean of this data set is 210.2, standard deviation is around 6, the, the n, the number of observations is around 20. Uh, also to get the five number summary, you need your median, your first and your third quartile. Those things are all given to your, your minimum and your maximum. Uh, these things are all provided for you in the Jump software. Again, this was all found by going to analyze and distribution. Now the final thing that we want to talk about here, we're going to create a stem plot. This was something that we did by hand in the notes, but I want you to understand the software will do it for you. And in order to get a stem plot, what you would do is again, we're going to go under this uh, options menu, choosing the down arrow. There's an option for stem and leaf. Remember that our textbook calls it a stem plot. However, it's a stem and leaf plot. Uh, in other textbooks, it's all the same thing. So if we select stem and leaf plot, it will now give us a stem plot down here at the bottom. It looks like it chose to split the cells, which is fine. Uh, we're not going to worry too much about customizing this. I just want to show you how you get, in, get it into your word processing. Uh, you will notice that if you right click in the area of the graph where I am right now, if I right click, nothing happens. To get this graph into Microsoft Word, what I would do is go up to the gray box where it says stem and and I'm going to right click on that gray box at the bottom. I will choose edit and again, whoops, excuse me, once I hover over edit, brings up another menu, you choose copy picture and now when I go to Microsoft Word, I can go ahead and copy that picture in there very easily and that's all you need to do. Thank you for your time.